Welcome to the Powerful Marketing Tips Podcast, created for overwhelmed business owners who want to build, run, and organize their marketing for good. And here's a brief overview of our guest. You're about to meet an incredible woman, Jill Salzman, the founder of The Founding Moms, which is a collective of live and local monthly meetups where mom entrepreneurs can exchange, connect, and learn from one another. Jill is also the author of The Best Business Book in the World, According to My Mom, and the author of Found It, A Field Guide for Mom Entrepreneurs. She shared the speaker stage with Richard Branson and Gerald Sandberg and gave a TEDx talk in November of 2011. She hosts a business podcast called Why Are We Shouting?, which is a question she asks herself daily. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. Today, we are here to talk about building a community and how to cultivate a fan base and really make them return buyers. Or we can also talk about chocolate or so much more, because as our guest told me before this interview, let's talk about anything you want. Welcome, children. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to talk about chocolate for as long as you like. Yes. Same here. So, Jill, please, for those who haven't heard yeah. about you, please briefly share what, what you do. Absolutely. I am a serial entrepreneur and an author and a podcast host uh, based in Chicago, and I run an organization called The Founding Moms. So we are a collective all over the world of mom entrepreneurs, uh, and all we do is provide resources and support. We provide education. We provide a lot of things so that they know how to build a better business. Okay, but can you explain why moms? Why not dads? Yeah, I love that. It's so interesting how no one ever asks me about that. They just assume I'm a mom and therefore that's why. Uh, I launched the entire business by accident. I didn't intend to serve moms. I didn't intend to serve entrepreneurs at all. Uh, I used to manage bands for a living. I was a music business gal. And then about a couple of years into having my first baby, I started a second business selling baby jewelry because I thought, well, I need to fill in all of the income gaps that starting my first business was creating. And so with two businesses and then being pregnant with a second child, I freaked out, frankly. I I went a little nuts and I thought, well, how are you supposed to run two businesses with two small children in one tiny home office. And my freak out led me to start a meetup on a site that I don't know if Mm -hmm. folks know anymore called meetup.com where I just posted an ad in Chicago. And I said, if you're a woman with a business and a baby, come and tell me how you're doing it because I'm ripping my hair out. I don't understand how am I going to accomplish one call with a screaming child? So That little self-serving meetup turned into a monthly gathering because we were all, you know, our jaws dropped and we thought, wait, you two? We're all wondering the same thing. So uh, (laughs) six months in, I realized there was a much bigger need than I had known about or anticipated. So Mm -hmm. I closed up my first business. I sold my second business and I decided to go full bore and help women who were in the same position as me. Uh, So to your question about why moms, that's a very long-winded answer of saying, well, I was in trouble. I want to help women who are in, feel that they're in trouble. And uh, and we've evolved quite a bit over the last 10 years and serve Mm -hmm. much more of a mom who is in a growth stage of her business rather than an I have an idea sort of stage of business. No, no, that's great, actually, because I would say vast majority of all businesses really starts with a problem, you know, yeah. that business owner has. Right? Yeah. So it's it's only normal, I think. So yeah, thank you. But for sure. <laughs> I know for sure. there are many. Yeah. <laughs> so there are many things we could talk about today. Uh, also chocolate, right? Because I love it as well. Oh, but <laughs> I would yeah. like to. <laughs> I'd like to focus, um, you know, on this uh, building a community. As this is really trending right now globally. I can yeah. see that. And um, since you were just sharing how you 
pretty much started your community or meetup. Can can you share this uh, or can can you walk us through this process and how long it like take for you to to actually uh, build this community you have today? Right. And again, I feel like I have to preface it by saying I didn't intend to create a community. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think I've loved community for a long time. I am very much a people person. And back in the day when I worked in the music business, long before I started my own business, I worked at a record label in New York called Electra Records. It doesn't exist anymore. But at the label, I watched lots of our artists, which I guess would, for our purposes, be called clients. They would all have street teams in different cities where they would have somebody in a city they were heading to perform in go and hang posters for them, go tell their friends, come to the concert, they're going to be so good, and basically be a, an, you know, on-the-ground promoter for the artist that we represented. So I've taken that idea that I knew really well at the label, and I've put it to work with the founding moms. So when I began, again, we were just in Chicago, I re- there was a woman who came up to me and she said, well, I really don't enjoy driving all the way to your meetings that you're having. Can you launch a second meeting? And I said, well, absolutely, of course. It's the internet. We can do anything. And mind you, this woman lived four miles away, the laziest American on the planet. But she was my inspiration (laughs) to go and launch a second meeting. And when I did that, I was sitting on the computer at a screen typing in a zip code. And I realized I could put in any zip code to anywhere and launch Mm -hmm. another meetup on this Mm -hmm. website, meetup.com. So I did. And I just went bananas. I was a maniac. And I started (laughs) opening. I called some friends in New York. Can you do this? I called friends in Los Angeles. Can you do this? Uh, About three or four years in, we had five cities in Mexico. We had a founding exchange, which is what we call our masterminds. In the Netherlands, we had some in Sweden. We had... We were all over the place, and I was very gung-ho to launch anywhere that I could find a mom entrepreneur in the world. So once I started launching, I realized, wait a second, this is what we now in 2022 call a community. So I realized I need to get well-versed in how one runs one, how one grows one. And I I had the concept of, well, I want to have street teams in lots of cities, but now how do I bring them all together? And so it has been a ride. It has been a giant learning curve that just keeps curving and doesn't ever end. Uh, So meaning I'm I'm still learning. (laughs) But I can't tell you how much I love growing a community, running a community. And in doing that, I am a part of the community because I have learned since there's literally no better way to build a business. There's no better way to connect with other people, to make sure it's reinforced to you that even though you feel like you don't know what you're doing or you are insecure about something or you're unsure about something, that other people are too because we are all the same in many ways. And it's really nice to get that Mm -hmm. reinforcement because then you get to say, hey, okay, I can do this. You mentioned you have uh, it, it took for you like three to five years. Is it the time frame right now, or is it? I like, think uh, now. How long have yeah, you done I've this? Yeah, I've been. Do- I mean, thinking. I technically have been doing this for twelve years, but the way that I began running or launching a community mm-hmm. would look very mm-hmm. different today. We have a lot more tools. That's for sure. We, have a, <laughs> we also have a pandemic that helped us all focus online mm-hmm. in ways that we just didn't before. Uh, Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. the first three to five years was me not charging anything. So from a business perspective, it was terrible, Mm -hmm. but it aggregated an awful lot of members, uh, Mm -hmm. to then start learning from them. And I took the slow route. I started learning, what do they need? What do I need to develop, et cetera, which has made us a very good, very niche, very specific community. But if you start one today, you don't need three to five years. I think you can you can get one mm-hmm. up and running in weeks. Have yeah, I believe so too. Because as you mentioned already, thanks to COVID, kind of uh, everybody are now online and uh, connected, right? So, but let's talk about those benefits, really. You know, 
because you also mentioned that those first years it was uh, you, you didn't charge yeah. anything, right? But um, can you share, you know, your, the benefits that uh, one business owner can can really have from building its uh, its community? Because um, we understand it takes time yeah. and some uh, some commitment and of course consistency, right? Actually. You just named all, yes, that was perfect. Those were the three things. <laughs> yeah, if you, <laughs> Sorry. No, no, I love it because, I mean, there are more variables, but I think the thing mm -hmm. people don't assume now in this day and age because of the internet, that they want to get it off the ground and they want to get going and they, how many Facebook ads do I run? How many ways can I grab people mm -hmm. and bring them in? And that's not how you cultivate a relationship. That's like walking into a party and just shouting at everybody mm -hmm. and telling them to come with you to somewhere else. It's just, it doesn't work. So the way humans relate to one another takes time. It takes trust. And the way you can gain people's trust to start uh, wanting to belong, feeling like they belong, is that you need to not only give them time, but like you said, consistency. I think that's a word that a lot of people underutilize And don't realize you need mm -hmm. to have consistency, especially now, because everybody's attention is drawn to a million different places, a million different emails, a million different opportunities. So if you have more, the more consistency you have and the more you deliver and delight, the more people will feel that from you and it will feel genuine and will say, hey, I want to be a part of the world she's in because that looks great. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and there's, by the way, the answer should also include, it depends on your community, it depends on the type of people in your community, because my community of mom mm -hmm. entrepreneurs is probably an extremely different community than one that I know of online where they teach people how to play the bass in, you know, the, mm. the bass guitar, <laughs> uh, very different crowd, very different needs. So mm -hmm. yeah, it depends. Of course. So I'd like to dive into those, let's say, best practices, of course, how to get started with the, with the community, let's say nowadays, uh, because you just mentioned you, you started, you know, a long time yeah. ago, but I'd first like to ask about, um, some common mistakes. Have you, have you seen, you know, people trying to build communities, but, uh, doing those mistakes there? <laughs> I mean, we're going to be here for a while, so I'm not going to go through all the mistakes. There are a lot. But what I see <laughs> okay, some of them. <laughs> across the board, uh, first, there's too much aggressive trying to target the right people to fit in your community and then pl like plowing through and saying to them, come join, come join, come join, come join, by way of a million emails, Facebook ads, Google ads, you name any kind of marketer's output, people will overdo it and say, come in, come in, come in. And and really, as we all know, especially in marketing, uh, word of mouth is king. And you want people to say, mm -hmm. I'm having a great time. You should come in. Uh, so the goal is, mm -hmm. to, is to get that word of mouth going, not to attack people. Uh, And I believe also people make the mistake literally of just bringing into a situation the expectation that what they're providing is so great that a million people will show up. And I'm saying that because I watch a lot of community organizers get devastated after literally just weeks that it's not working out. And so they will, um, their morale disappears and they get upset and they cry a lot. And the other big one that I notice, <laughs> folks will often over-provide, meaning, I don't mean targeting with the marketing, I mean inside the community. Uh, whatever community you serve, community organizers, mm -hmm. they want to give and they want to make everybody happy. So they overdo it and mm -hmm. they'll come up with What do you mean 14,000... Uh, workshops, 49 webinars, here are 72 courses, here's 600 books to read, here's 13 lists I use to be more creative. Uh, it's just too many tools and too many resources. Mm -hmm. And even though mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. all wonderful and it's all magical and it's all very helpful, you can't give so much. Less is more. 
Less, less is, more. is definitely more. Lights. And I am saying this with a lot of energy because guess who has done that quite a bit for her community? <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's great. But um, what are the, let's say, I don't know, three main things you should do when you start to build your community? I mean, uh, yeah. Especially when you when you're thinking how to like uh, have this framework or or how to structure yes, it. Yes, what are your I thoughts think it's, here? It's actually quite simple. I think you just ask your friends, ask your colleagues. Hey, you want to be a part mm-hmm. of this? And I I literally mean verbally. Just ha- call them, send them a message that's not a templated message. Hey, I think you'd be a great mm-hmm. fit. Do you want to come join me? And you'll get a lot of no's or a lot of uh, ghosting, ignoring. Mm -hmm, But then mm -hmm. uh, you will get some people interested. And then when you have your first event or meeting or whatever you're having, you then ask everyone at that meeting, can you all bring someone else the next time? I mean, it's simple basics, what we all learned in school at a young age from our friends at parties. (laughs) It's literally the same as hosting a great party. You just want to go easy on them. So that's the very first thing I Mm -hmm. would do is ask people, do you think you would benefit from this? Is there something you could gain? I'm going to go ahead. I don't know if you meant this, but I'm going to answer the tech question of then where do you put them? Where do you do this? Because a Mm -hmm. lot of people. That was my next question. Okay. Yeah. Because a lot of people will (laughs) say, uh, okay, I have my email list of 500 people and I'm imitating a football player. Uh, but it's because I hear that a lot. You know, I'm, I, I have like a thousand likes on Facebook, so they're all going to come with me. Uh, you don't want to use a social media channel. So no WhatsApp, no Facebook, no LinkedIn. You can add them to groups there, but you don't own it. Mm -hmm. So it could disappear. We don't want this. So I have just moved to a platform called Circle. Uh, And I don't know if you've heard of it, but it is built. It's a platform built for community organizers to run communities. It's gorgeous. It works perfectly. No, I'm lying because they just launched not long ago. So they're, they're constantly launching new things for us to do. But if you're just getting started, it's perfect. Uh, So I would check out, I I believe it's circle.so. I believe that's the link. You could have your own WordPress website, have your own. Uh, there are lots of plugins for mm-hmm. WordPress websites. That's where we came from. Um, mm-hmm. So that, that's, I would start by asking people, getting them into some sort of platform. Yes, I, I'm sorry oh, for interruption, but please. I need to ask. If I, if I will build, you know, a community to the circle, you just mentioned, right? Wouldn't that be too overwhelming for people because they have different communities you mentioned, you know, in LinkedIn, in Facebook, they are uh, involved in different groups. Would it be, I'm just thinking out loud right now, maybe it's not correct, but maybe it is like too much to go to another I understand what you're asking. So that's Mm -hmm. actually a question that a lot of community organizers are battling with right now. They're grappling Mm -hmm. with this idea Mm -hmm. that there will be massive overwhelm. You're already in a Facebook group and now come to the second place. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mm -hmm. I can only speak for myself and a couple of people I've seen (laughs) and talked to who have large communities. Uh, The members of the communities that have moved to circle that I'm aware of, the members are thrilled that there's nothing anymore on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter or TikTok or Snapchat or wherever you are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because within the platform itself on social media, it's overwhelming already. And so when you're trying to interact yep. with your members in a supportive way, a lot gets it either in the way from other things in your feed or mm-hmm. they don't see it. So you can post this incredible opportunity. I have $1 million for every member in the community And then they, like, they'll miss the post on Facebook, for example, Mm -hmm. and they just won't see it. So ever since we've brought folks over, of the hundreds that are now in circle with us, maybe I've had one or two, literally one or two people say, I don't want another platform. 
and they don't join us and thank you. Goodbye. You know, like it's, that's, uh, so I, I think that's, I'm not hearing anything different from anyone else in circle, for example, or in another custom built website mm-hmm. or platform where there's not noise, social media noise. Okay. But you know what? To that's that very end, good. thank you. If, if you mm-hmm. have a Facebook group, for example, and you want to stay there and build out, there are plenty, plenty of communities that are doing that. I'm just of talking course. to somebody mm-hmm. who is not mm-hmm. a fan of social media. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a lot of it, but I, to build a community, to me, that's like a giant no-no. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's very good. I, I appreciate that. So let's go, let's carry on. You know, first was ask. The second thing was the technical side of this. What was yes. the third? The third one. Hold on. Mention. I'm picking mm-hmm. through the 49. I could tell you. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> the next one, like the, I guess our, our final step today would be that you want to come up with actually the third tip of three is to come up with three mm-hmm. things that you would like to provide to your members and only three things. Mm. What are the standouts? What are the reasons they're going to join you? Let me, let me pick at some of the things that should not be in your top three. You should not write down. They'll join me because I'm amazing. Don't, that's not why they're going to join. No matter how amazing you are, that's not why they're coming. So what, what can they gain or benefit from your community that they can't find anywhere else? A lot of community organizers will say, I want to launch a course or a bunch of courses, but other people are doing that all over YouTube or all over other platforms, Mm -hmm. teachable. uh, Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, you do want to provide your own content of some kind. Could be a podcast, could be a course, could be a bunch of workbooks, because the way you provide it and the way you uh, create it, is going to be very particular to you and your community and your tone and your mm-hmm. vibe and your brand. And that's what they're buying into. So yes, we have a whole library of courses for mom entrepreneurs. We call them snack sized because what mom has time to watch a course. So there are four 10 minute segments in every course. You can go learn the exact same stuff on YouTube, a masterclass, mm-hmm. unteachable, mm-hmm. anywhere, mm-hmm. anywhere you can go learn the same sales, marketing, and branding tips, but you won't learn it in the Mm -hmm. same way that we teach it and talk about it after it's released. So item number one has to be something they can consume that they're really loving. Mm -hmm. Item number two needs to be some way that you are engaging with them. Is that you're just commenting regularly in a chat room? Are you sending out an email? Is it weekly? Is it daily? Is it monthly? How are you encouraging them to just engage with the community. Engage. Uh, Mm -hmm. You want to think long and hard about that. And by the way, the tips I'm giving you, you don't need to go do these. You try these out and then you see what works for your people. And a beautiful Mm -hmm. part about Mm -hmm. running a community is that they're right there. You can just ask them like, Hey, I'm sending out a weekly email. Do you like getting it weekly or do you want it daily? Easy, easy marketing that you can do. Uh, And the third (laughs) The third thing I'm going to suggest you do is figure out, so now you know what you're offering inside to your community and where. Mm -hmm. How are you telling Mm -hmm. people outside? Once you've asked your 10 Mm -hmm. friends, I love that I just assumed every Mm -hmm. listener only has 10 friends. But once you've asked all of your 10 friends, (laughs) uh, how externally are you showing the world what kind of community you are? You want to think about how to position yourself and tell your story and make sure folks know why I should join you and not somebody else. Mm -hmm. Pretty good tips. Thank you. So let's talk about this consistency also, because I think that's the, that's the biggest struggle. How do you know that? It's so great. And so many people don't know. I love that. (laughs) Because I'm a marketer. (laughs) That's the, that's always there, you know. Marketing is all about consistency. So, but yeah, sorry, carry on. Yeah, and that's why I teach them and I help them. Yeah, yeah. thank you. For sure. <laughs> so, th- tell us a little bit uh, this consistency because um, we know both it, it is uh, it is needed. So, how how 
often is like too often? Or is it really like you should ask from your community, as you just mentioned, that just ask them? So, you, we could maybe try yeah, out there's to, two only, sides to it I don't know. You can weekly. ask them, but if you start mm-hmm. out your community by saying, when do you want to see a course? When do you want to get an email? They don't know. It's your community. So you need to make some decisions up front. And it's, again, mm-hmm. it's going to depend on the industry you're in. And I say this because mm-hmm. I tend to send out important messaging to the community on Tuesdays and Wednesdays because those are work weeks. Mm -hmm. Kids are in school, so moms have more time to check their inbox. Uh, (laughs) And for for a variety of reasons that pertain to my audience. But if you manage bands Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you have an artist that is a performing trumpet player and he performs concerts on Saturdays, you're going to want to communicate with your audience on Fridays and Saturdays. Because that's when people go to shows. Mm-hmm. That's when people are thinking about music, etc. So frequency, I don't, there are no hard and fast rules. I debate personally every day between the daily email I send and moving to a weekly. And I've done both and I change mm-hmm. my mind all the time. But I, I, mm-hmm. once every other week is the most amount of time you should spend between communication. If you're doing once a month, mm-hmm. you're losing people. They're not paying attention. Uh, it's too far. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, we do a lot of weekly things. So we're, we tend to be a weekly crowd, except for one monthly webinar that we happen to host. Um, I think I'm lying mm-hmm. to you. We're a weekly crowd with a daily email and a monthly webinar. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. <laughs> So but, but that's pretty good. So I have your, my community and I'm consistent and I'm doing all of those things, building those relationships, being authentic. But uh, let's talk about, you know, cultivating this fan base there. What are your thoughts here? Because I think that's a very thin ice, you know, you don't want to scare away those people in your community. No, that's, that's really great. And in fact, I've probably scared many people away. Uh, I... The way you cultivate the fan base is that you literally, I I think I said this earlier, I'm a big fan of just making sure you delight your members. And if that means Mm -hmm. you're um, not over providing with resources, but you're over providing with love and care and things that are very emotional, Uh, sending a lot of, I call them love notes. And I don't mean literally like, Dear member, I love you. Love, Jill. Not that. But just if somebody posts a comment, I will go out of my way to respond with, thank you so much. That was really helpful to the conversation. Where in a typical setting, you're not going to every single time anybody says anything, thank you so much for sharing. You don't, that's annoying, right? But in a, (laughs) excuse me, in a community setting, As the organizer, you have to just a little bit give more love. And uh, I'm thinking about how, like, the metaphor for this is if you have a a pet, like a dog, and you're training the dog to do things Mm -hmm. and and eat the food and do the tricks, you're constantly going, good boy, and overdoing it a little with the emotional bit because positive (laughs) reinforcement is the same for animals and for human beings who are animals. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I, know. <laughs> I tend to want anybody to over delight with care and paying attention to the members. That's the biggest battle for a community organizer. How do I scale this? Mm-hmm. But how do I make sure everyone feels heard, taken care of, um, and seen? And if you can figure out that magical formula where you can meet those, <laughs> you will be cult- successfully cultivating a legion of people who believe in you, who trust you, that when you recommend something, when you tell them to go do something, when you ask them for something, mm-hmm. they will do it because they know you mean it and you mean mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. by them, you know? Yeah, I I hear you saying that when you are really there serving others, then, you know, it's only natural, let's say, byproduct that they, yes. you know, want to buy your um, services or or products you're offering. I mean, and to give a very minor example, if anybody listening is up on any politics going on in America these days, 
uh, we do a very strong job of never talking about politics in the founding moms, because not only is it too divisive right now and really ugly and horrible Mm -hmm. for a bunch of other reasons, but because if I share my view that would split everyone, even if I feel very strongly about something in my personal life in the Mm -hmm. day, Mm -hmm. and it's not even personal, it's happening in the whole country. I don't want my members who might not have my viewpoint, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. run. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's not what I I know. (laughs) If I was running a political community, very different story. But because I'm not, I just want them to feel good. I assume you don't talk about COVID as well. You know what? Actually, we do talk quite a bit. Uh, you're right. Not, I think you're asking about like vaccines. And <laughs> you have to be careful there. We talk about that. But we do talk about the exhaustion of the pandemic, how everybody's doing regarding yeah, all okay. of the homeschooling mm-hmm. we had to go through for a long time. So the the effects of the pandemic, not the actual, did you go get the vax? Yeah, okay. <laughs> that was- Yeah. (laughs) And I like how hard you're laughing because America is just not a smart place right now. Mm -mm. (laughs) Why? Just it's uh, it's a crazy place right now. It feels very nuts over here. And it's. Okay, we should have another podcast about that. That's not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Jill. So I I feel like I could go like hours here, but (laughs) I. Yeah, I'm running a community because I'm always talking to my members. This is great. I love it. (laughs) So actually, I have um, another question because you mentioned that uh, you have shared stage with Richard Branson. I have. I'd like to, you know, hear you talking about that as well. Yeah, for sure. Well, how was it and when was it and what happened? Yeah, (laughs) I was down in Mexico. No, they had a, a large... Uh, conference for folks like mm-hmm. me and Richard and you. They just had a huge business conference in Mexico, and I went down to speak, and so did he. And I am a little bit obsessed with Richard Branson, so I tried mm-hmm. to get to him, uh, and it just wasn't going to happen. So I ended up realizing this, spent the whole week trying to find him, sat down in the audience, which for his Well, I sat down in the audience, which was full, obviously, of Mexicans who all speak Spanish. And when Richard got up to speak, he said, of course, brilliant, insightful, wonderful things we all needed to learn. But in between comments, he kept on cracking jokes. And they were of a sexual nature. And they were, if you speak English, very funny. But if you don't mm-hmm. speak very good English, it makes an entire stadium of Spanish-speaking people feel very awkward. So it was quite a time oh watching God. Richard Branson uh, stand there and just make side comments that are very nuanced. And you really have to know English to get what he means. Otherwise, uh, it was it was basically just to paint the picture, like thousands of people sitting alongside me and I was the one laughing very loudly and no one else. That that sort of was my experience of it. Um, but yeah, we just, we spoke at the same time. Wow. That's, that's amazing. You're doing some great Thank things. You. So I can, I can see that. <laughs> well, the community's <laughs> helped a lot do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, as I read, according to your own mom, you also have best business book but, in yes, the world. Yes, that is you. literally the title <laughs> It's the best business book in the world, parentheses, according to my mom. She does still believe that it is, <laughs> FYI. Uh, Can you share briefly what's yeah, the book yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. As I said, I write a daily email, and some of them are mm-hmm. fine, and some of them are good. So I took the good ones, and I made a compilation, <laughs> and I put together uh It's sort of a, a, it's just a compilation of different stories, anecdotes. Um, Mm -hmm. Often Mm -hmm. I love to talk about business blunders. So I make a lot of business mistakes and I'm very open about it. I have a podcast that's entirely, every episode is just a business mistake I've made Um, or someone (laughs) else has made. So it's just a compilation of Mm -hmm. that and a lot of pointers or tips about how to build a business uh, while you're raising a family. 
And yes, men can read okay. it too. It's fun. <laughs> you already understand what my next question is going to be. <laughs> so, um, if you were to wrap it up today here, so do you have any final thoughts or something you think, you know, our listeners need to hear because we are talking to, yes. you know, those overwhelmed small business owners who are out there oftentimes alone, overwhelmed and, uh, you know, like hamsters in a wheel every day now realizing that, oh my God, I should also build a community. Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> that's going to be things. my final tip is... As you just said, everybody who's working alone or feels overwhelmed or is stressed, which, mm -hmm. by the way, is every business person in the world, including Richard Branson. Uh, I highly recommend if you, after listening to this, think, you know what? I'm not ready to start a community or I never want to run my own. I'm not that kind of leader. You Just go join one. Go join and find a community. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know where to start, There's this place that you might have heard of called Google, where you can go and you can just look up other communities. You can go to meetup.com. You can go to circle.so, lots of <laughs> communities to join. And I often tell folks, if they're not entirely sure, you can ask people which ones are great or go join five of them mm -hmm. and get sort of read the temperature of the place. And if it's for you, stay, get help, ask more questions. And if not, go find a better one. That's a great wrap up, Jill. So, and uh, you can also Google the founding yes. moms if you are <laughs> you can a mom. Google it or just go straight to foundingmoms.com. Yeah. <laughs> That's even better. So, uh, please tell where should people go if they want to connect with you right I now? I'm sure they, they do. Welcome anybody want to. to connect with me. While I said I don't love social media, I'm mm -hmm. everywhere. So, I'm at founding mom. I am the, the biggest fan of Twitter. So, come tweet at me there. Uh, but we are at Founding Moms everywhere you can think of. And uh, yeah, foundingmoms.com. Come hang out, please. Mm -hmm. yeah. We will. We will. We will put the link awesome. next to this, you, you know, to the thank show you, notes you. as well. But Jill, before we go, please comment on the song and a quote, of course, you have shared with us because they will also go to our Spotify list and uh, yes, to the Pinterest. I love that you do that. My song choice is She's a Maniac. Uh, it's from the movie Flashdance. At this moment, I'm so sorry, mm -hmm. I can't re remember the artist. Because all you think of is she's a maniac, maniac, maniac. Exactly. And it, yeah, it's a great dance song. <laughs> If you have a lot of stress, get up, play it, and just dance next to your laptop. Uh, but I often feel that way. <laughs> that's so that's great. why that's my song choice. And uh, <laughs> what was the other one? Oh, my quote. My quote. Oh, quote. My favorite quote. <laughs> of all time is always uh, the very short quote, just do it. Nike. I, I, I don't know, know that. what Nike came up with it, but uh, <laughs> it's the most brilliant, powerful marketing message in the world. Mm -hmm. And I listen to that every day and I just do it. Wow. That is powerful. Well, Jill, thank you so much. Thank you for coming to our podcast, for taking this time. You know, you're, you have this great energy and very valuable <laughs> insights, energy, really. But, <laughs> but thank you so much for having no, me. This it's, was an awesome <laughs> conversation. It really was. Yeah. It was. It was. Hey, Thank you, pleasure. Jill. That's all we've got for this episode of the Powerful Marketing Tips podcast. Make sure to link up with us at our free monthly international mastermind event. Just go to powerful-marketers.com forward slash mastermind for registration. And one thing that would really help us and other new potential listeners is if you would rate this show and leave a comment wherever you tune in to listen. Until next time, take care.